Creating conversations, especially when it comes to food. Yum. <laughs> Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 444 is with food guru Adam Richman. I'm well. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. I'm one of those people that came from the 1980s. I was doing 7 to Midnight Radio, so to see that you're eating the 80s is absolutely fantastic in my world. So you already know, like, we had the music game on lock and the truth is when most people look back at the 80s it's usually the fashion the fads or the music so personally as a kid who grew up during the 80s to look at it through the prism of food is kind of an awesome adventure it absolutely is because i'll tell you what I, to me that's where mall food started becoming really extremely popular we were headed to the mall to have lunch dinner or whatever yeah, the mall in general, it was the chat room before the internet. You know, this was the last decade before the internet, truly. And that's where you learn about the newest fashions, the newest music, where you hit on, you know, members of the opposite sex, where you are the same. <laughs> there were, uh, you know, the, the food court was where you were exposed to flavors that you hadn't seen. And the truth of the matter is, having gone now to the first ever Panda Express in the Glendale Galleria, oh and gone to the first ever Auntie Anne's in, in a mall in Lancaster, again, these, these were individual places that because of hard work and the right time, it was this whole new thing. The mall culture was the 80s and it gave food an opportunity that it just never had before well it always reminded me and it still does even today uh like like an episode of petticoat junction people always went to this little area where the food was we just sat down and had this conversation and and really just a lot of a community broke out basically absolutely absolutely and i think that again now you have a much more adventurous eater the average you know caucasian person from the middle of the country knows what sriracha is yeah. or can tell you the difference between pho and ramen but that was not the case in the 1980s and if you were going to be exposed to asian flavors or greek flavors or a certain italian flavors the food court was generally where it was kind of a safe space to do it. Then also remember, this is the decade that saw the advent of the microwave. So you had the option <laughs> of recreating these at home. You had both parents working more than ever. So you had latchkey kids. So then all of a sudden kids have purchasing power. You had agency determining if I want to eat at the mall or if I want to microwave this lean cuisine or this hot pocket oh, <laughs> or whatever God, it is right right so you had this massive growth and then also remember beef became more expensive so fast food pivoted to chicken you got the mcnugget the bk chicken sandwich you got the um the, the crazy wings the bk chicken tenders so there was all kinds of new food experiences to be had and we're not even talking about the chocolates the candies the sodas you name it yeah, yeah, you bring up a good point about the mcnuggets and stuff like that because i i'll, I'll tell m millennials as well as generation z i said i was there when the mcnugget was given birth and and, and when they, when they turn it into where you could get 20 of them my god it was a moment yeah oh absolutely and everybody knows that the real power move is one sweet and sour, one hot mustard. And you gotta, <laughs> that's the way to go. But the other thing is, it was so popular, the country began running out of chicken that they actually worked with the Gorton's company to create the, the breading that would adhere. Wow. And in point of fact, I learned during this show that there are four recognized nugget shapes boot ball bell and bone and uh they're all to arrange uniform cooking times but i think that these that's the great thing too because um on history on sundays i do food that built america and then i do um adam eats the 80s right mm -hmm. afterwards and so what's great is you get the legends and then you get the legacy <laughs> so and the 80s you know there's flavors we can't get anymore you know, McDonald's stopped frying their French fries in beef right. fat. Coke stopped making their soda with sugar. So to have food scientists recreate them for this show and compare them and go, work is it just <laughs> minus sense of nostalgia and the fact that my Christmas song is Do They Know It's Christmas by the, the British bands and that my, you know, I bought Seven in the Ragged Tiger by Duran Duran on cassette. <laughs> is that why I think these fries are better? Or... Are they just better, dude? I I remember in the nineteen eighties when when you went to a Derwiner Schnitzel, it, it was it was a delicacy. You you were going to the fancy fast food place. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that that's a thing. And now I think fast food is like at this crossroads because you have this educated eater that's vegan, paleo, keto, blah, blah, blah. But it's also convenient, consistent, and always delicious. And you're finding more elevated foods and elevated flavors coming out of fast food. How much is the air fryer going to change the way that we eat? Because I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to that thing. That's the only thing that I cook with anymore. It's superb. Um, I mean, I think that it stands to reason the same way we're talking about the microwave in a show about the 80s. I could absolutely see uh, a show about cooking in the 21st century where the air fryer, uh, without question, has prominence. I mean, there was just certain things like the George Foreman grill, like yeah. the air fryer that become cultural moments. In fact, in the 80s, food gadgets were so prevalent. That's why we do a whole segment in Head of Eats the 80s on just those food infomercials. So we do like the Ron Popeil egg scrambler. <laughs> I reenact the Ginsu knife commercial, the juice man juicer. People oh. forget you would go to the mall and there would be demos mm -hmm. of people like trying these things out that you would then see on these infomercials. Now you can get an ad in the middle of your Instagram feed. You can get an ad in the middle of a clip you're watching on YouTube. There could be, you know, a not so subtle brand integration into the movie you're watching like Reese's pieces and ET. So I think, um, the air fryer is going to be like one of those things that like makes like parents would not want their their high school age child to deep fry some wings right but throwing some wings in an air fryer yeah that's cool and when i was a kid as a latchkey kid myself there's no way my mom would necessarily go sure chop up these vegetables and do this and then saute but nuke, nuke a lean cuisine or heat up a hot pocket, <laughs> you're good, Adam. You're good. Uh, you know, one thing that I'm seeing a lot of sales <clears throat> in these days, Big League Chewing Gum is back. Yeah, Big League Chew is in the Baseball Hall of Fame now. And I think, you know, baseball has seen, you know, it was, it was dying for a minute there and saw a resurgence. And I think as long as there are kids to play Little League, <laughs> there will be a market for big league chew. And as long as there were men who played little league and women, quite frankly, who played little league as kids and want to recreate that feeling. I just uh, did a show with Mario Lopez and I had some big league chew and that guy tore into it. <laughs> like it was the treasure of the Sierra Madre. Like he had never seen it. Oh my God. Oh, so true. So true. Well, congratulations on Adam Eats the 80s on, on the History Channel, dude. This, I mean, you, you definitely always connect yourself to things that, that we can relate with. Well, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor to hear anyone say that. It's well, the best thing I could hear. Come back to the show anytime, dude. The door's always going to be open for you. I appreciate that kindly. Thank you. You bet. Be brilliant.